Hello and welcome to my new video about converting black and white, converting color images into black and white images. And this week we're going to be looking at using the black and white adjustment tool. Now the black and white adjustment tool has been around since CS4, if my memory serves me correctly. And uh, it's been in CS5 and now it's in CS6. And the black and white adjustment tool is actually a very good tool. Um, it works similar to the way the channel mixer worked uh, in the last video, but it gives you a bit more flexibility. It's also very similar to the same tool that is used in Camera Raw. So I'm not really going to talk about Camera Raw conversions into black and white because it's exactly the same principle, um, but it's done in Camera Raw. So once again, I got my image here, and I'm just going to go to my layer adjustments. And in my layer adjustments, there's black and white. And black and white comment comes on top of the on top as a layer adjustment. Now I'm gonna pull you down. There we are. And you can normally the other way you can do is just go layer, and then go layer adjustment, and then select it there. So here is your layer adjustment tool. Now I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger because I'm so you can see it a little bit. What you have here this is the default setting, and you have six channels. So you have red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. And what we can do here is we can actually uh, change each individual tone, lighter or darker, to affect the image. Um, so you can just pull the reds darker if you want to, or you can pull them very much lighter. So you can just play around a little bit like that. So we go back to default. Now, once again, in the presets, there are many different presets. So you just have the, the blue filter, darker, green filter, high contrast, <laughs> high contrast red, infrared, just generally lighter, maximum black, maximum white, neutral density, red, and yellow. Now most of these can't mimic um, the filters that you'd find on your, find for your camera. Now one of the great things here with the black and white preset is you have this little thing here where you can just select on something and you can put it left and right, put it left it makes it darker right it makes it lighter so you can sort of look at one sort of thing of, I want this lighter or I want this darker um, what you have to be careful of though is that although it may change this one sort of bit here which I wanted it affects the whole image it doesn't affect just that one little area that you're on so when you use this tool you've really got to be not too like let's say aggressive and it actually reacts quite well I normally go to the far extreme and then slowly pull back to the point which I'm sort of like, yeah, I quite like that there. Um, there we are. Other people use different ways. Um, they have sort of different preferences. They go, oh, I'm just going to move things around as I want to, when I want to. Really, this is a place where you can play. And I mean, you can really play um, and just find out what is the best uh, for you. Go blue and then go back to default to give me my default. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is I sort of know from like previous videos roughly what I wanted. I'm sort of wanting quite a light red and quite a dark blue, but not too, maybe not too dark. And then here I can just alter the general um, areas just to see, I guess maybe there's light in there. That's kind of thing, yeah. So really, I'm doing this by eye. I'm just looking to see what do I find appealing, and then working on it from that. And our agenda doesn't really change. Quite a bit of quite high up there. So really, it's the case of changing it as you want it. You know, to give the tone of the image that you're you're looking for. Oh, actually, it gives you quite nice highlights in here. So I can 
Ding ist besagt. So I'm just working on area by area, finding out what to be best. Now once again, with an adjustment layer, um, you can change it, you can come back to it, and you can play with it as much as you want. One thing you can do with this though, is you can add a tint. Now this is quite good if you're looking to make a sepia image, or you want to, try, want to put a color cast on the image. The only thing I would not, the only reason I would not use it is because you don't really get full control over it, um, over your setting. That's the only reason why I wouldn't use it. There's also an auto setting, which you can click, which will auto balance your image, which I don't really like, because I prefer doing things myself. Sometimes the computer is not the most intelligent person in the room. If I was to do a sepia adjustment, what I would do is I would just add a hue and saturation and I would then go to colorize. I would then choose my tone. I could choose the saturation of it. You can have quite saturated if you want it, or you can have it very, very, very subtle. You can have it quite saturated. You can then even then just go opacity and bring it, bring that saturation back down. That's how I would do it. You get a lot more control. Um, you can sort of change it. You can sort of change it a bit and things like that. That's my personal preference to doing um, a sepia image. Either that, or if you're really looking to do sepia, um, just go to the photo filter um, and sort of choose like one of the maybe one of the warming filters if you want to do it that way and you can just sort of increase it it's not perfect but you know that's the way I prefer to do it than using the one the black and white um, adjustment tool uh, so let's say I did keep don't want to say we get rid of that just there and then I do my levels See, once you look to the levels, you could then even then just look back in and go, oh, well, maybe I can just try and change something a little bit. Like that. And there we are. So I'm going to move. There we go. Put it back in. Full size. So there we are. And that's my image now black, turned to black and white. It's quite good. I don't think it's good as the last one I did. Um, I do prefer using the channel mixer in Photoshop, and I prefer using this. This is called the HSL panel in Adobe Camera Raw for huge saturation and lightness. What you do to use this, a similar panel to this in Camera Raw, is you literally go to the HSL panel, and then you click on the saturation, and you then click monochrome, and then you can do the exact same thing in Camera Raw. Um, I'll just show you quickly because I will have an image here already ready. So open in camera raw. There we are. So this is a conversion which I did. There it is, convert to grayscale. And the exact same the exact same panel. There's an auto feature. You don't have the tinting feature because you can just do this here in the split toning. You can just add that into this on the split toning like that but it's um, exactly the same panel there so that's that so that's about it uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you join me in the next video just to look at local black and white adjustments okay bye bye